Look at Ephesians 6.10. It says, in conclusion, this is amplified, be strong in the Lord. The, uh, be empowered through your union with him. If you're not enjoying life, you're not, you're not being strong in the Lord. You're not being empowered through your union with him. When you're empowered, you walk in victory. You walk in health, you walk in prosperity, you walk in blessing, you walk without fear. Be empowered through your union with him. How do you, how do you maintain that union? Well, you get in a good church, you hear good word preached, you study the word for yourself, you believe it, you take it, you act on it. And you, you have a, a, un, a union develops where you hear from God. You talk to him, he talks to you. You do what he says, and he'll do as you ask him to do, if it's according to his will and in the word. Be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. Now, I, I, I don't believe we lose that verse when we get to be 80 or 90 or 100 or past. We could still stand on this strong word right here for strength at any age. I don't see any limit there. As long as you're in the body, you can be strong in the Lord and we can draw strength from him. Amen? Put on God's whole armor. See, this is for people that are serious about the things of God. The whole armor, don't leave anything off that you may be able to stand against the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Hallelujah. Verse 13 says, God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger having done all to stand. So we know we're going to have to have faith. You can't live down here in this messed up world and not need your faith. So we're going to have to be armed going to have to be armored up, hallelujah, and be able to withstand when tests and trials come, when, when prosperity test comes, when health test comes, when family test comes. It ought not just catch us asleep. We ought to be ready. We ought to be armed. Glory to God. We can be armed. We've got the armor. We've got the weapons to cast down every attempt of Satan that comes against us. And that certainly includes every sickness and every disease. Glory to God. So we're a strong people. We're not a weak people. We're a well people, as we'll see as we go on through these scriptures. And, uh, and we don't have to walk in defeat. We don't have to be sick any more than we have to be broke. Hallelujah. Why? Because that's under the curse. That is under the curse. I'm going uh, to look, I'm going to read you this uh, in the King James Bible. I like being free. I don't remember what it was like when I was under the curse. I wasn't sick, but sure was broke. Christ, Galatians 3 says, and here's, here it is all wrapped up together, uh, 11, read verse 11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just, the righteous, the ones in right standing with God, the just shall live by faith. Now that did not say that those that are born again can live any way they want to and have things work out for them. No, it says... The just, those that are, have been justified, shall live by faith. Do you see anybody that's born again left out of that? No. You say, well, I, I don't know about those faith people. I, I think they're pretty crazy. I, I don't want to be one of them. You don't have to be, but you sure would be smarter if you'd get in faith. <laughs> you'd be smarter. You'd be healthier. You'd be richer. You'd be more blessed. You'd be more peaceful. How many of you enjoy peace? I like peace. I remember when life was a turmoil and you couldn't pay your bills and sickness came and you just did like Brother Hagin said. You said, well, come on. He said, people say, well, just come on in. How long are you going to be with me this time? 
That's about how dumb people are without the Word of God. When sickness comes knocking on our door, we don't say, come on in. We say, get on out in the name of Jesus. You're not coming in my body or on my family or on my children. In Jesus' name. What's that called? That's called resistance. And what happens when you resist? Resist the devil and what? He flees from you. But if you don't resist him, he's going to hang around because he's looking for a home. You know that song, I wish I could sing and sing to you, just looking for a home. Well, that's what the devil is. You know why he looks for a home? Because he ain't got one. He doesn't have a body. He's looking for a body. Nothing belongs to him unless somebody lets him use theirs. Glory to God. He's, why is that? Because he's been whooped. Not whipped, whooped. I mean, he has been whooped. When you've been whooped, you know it. He knows he's whooped. But a lot of people don't know he's whooped. But we do. And what happens? We resist him. We say, no, you don't, devil. You resist him and, and, and you say, no, you don't. You don't get on my child. No, you're not taking my child. No, uh -uh. I break your power of the devil. I break your power over my child. You can't have him. Drugs can't have him. Alcohol can't have him. Sin can't have him. He's mine. And I bind you, Satan, and you don't touch him in Jesus' name. And you stand your ground for your children. Don't let the devil, what? Steal. He's a thief. Don't let him steal from you in Jesus' name. The just shall live by faith. There you have it. Verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed the, us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it's written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. That's every sickness and every disease under that curse in Deuteronomy 28. That the blessing of Abraham, the blessing, whoo, not the curse, the blessing, Amen. might come on the Gentiles or those through Jesus Christ. We're not, I'm not Jewish. Most of you aren't Jewish. Some of you are. But thank God it doesn't matter now. The blessing's available to me. You know, he, the Jews are God's chosen people. But now we get in on it. Hallelujah. We got the blessing. Woo, we got the blessing. I mean, it wasn't just something that happened to you one Sunday morning. When you got born again, you got healed. You got the blessing. You got the good things. In life, peace, love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, self-control. What is that? That's the fruit of the Spirit. You got born again, you got all those assets. Amen. All those things to give you strength, to keep you steady, to make you strong. We're, we are blessed. Now, if you see yourself pitiful, you just don't have any revelation if you're a believer. You know, we only have a short time here, so I can't, I can't coddle you this morning. I've got to tell you the truth. <laughs> if you see yourself pitiful and you've, been, and you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's because you don't know anything. <laughs> or, or I could say you're ignorant. <laughs> now you're insulted. <laughs> no, it's true. Ignorance is just not knowing. That's all there is to it. I was ignorant for a while, but I tell you what, when I found out about the Word and the truth of the Word, I got unignorant if there was such a word. I dumped that old way of life. I dumped not being able to pay bills. I dumped sickness, disease, worry, strife, hate. I dumped it all. And I became a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things passed away, and all things became new, and all things were of God and are of God. Isn't that what we do? I'm telling you, church, we're blessed. We're healed, we're prosperous, we're peaceful. It all belongs to us. Glory to God. All the good, all the blessing. Jesus bore the bad for us so that we could walk in the good. Now, you might be here today and you might be born, not be born again. You've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Oh, mercy. Don't let today go by without saying, Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. 
Oh, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like coming out of defeat, sickness, disease, and all the lack and all the junk and all the curse into the blessing where all the good things, all the good peace, love, joy, increase, prosperity, abundance belongs to you. Yeah, well, I don't believe that. Well, just go and do the best you can do then. It won't be very good. You'll never have victory on your own. Why? Because there is a curse out there. There is a curse. Jesus redeemed us from the curse, but we have to receive the Redeemer to get out from under it. So if you enjoy where you are and you don't want to honor God, and when you, want, when you die, you'd rather go get a little flame than go to heaven, well, or a lot of flame. It's just up to us. Isn't that something God lets us choose? Say, well, I don't believe it. Well, maybe you should reconsider. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Heaven is a real place. Hell is a real place. And if you don't have God, you're not doing very well in a lot of areas. I can tell you that right now because there's a curse moving around. There's a devil moving around seeking whom he may devour. Well, I've determined he may not have me. And you've determined he may not have you. But there may be some here who haven't determined that. I tell you, he's a dirty rat fink. You think of all the bad you can think of and it'll be him. He's come to kill. This is what the Bible says. Kill, steal, and destroy. He's a killer. He's a, thir a thief. He's a destroyer. And he's under our feet. In Jesus' name. That's what the Bible says. Glory to God. I like victory. I like the blessing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm kind of off my subject here, but let's get going. Okay, so, uh, so we are talking about being healed. Now, one thing that cuts your life short is not keeping the commandment, the commandment, the commandment. Say the commandment. If we don't keep the commandment, then we're not living in obedience and we're not living in the blessing spot. I like that term. I never have used it before. But there is a blessing spot where you're doing what God says do. You're believing. You're saying. You're receiving. You're sowing. Glory to God. You're doing whatever you find out to do, and you're looking for more to do from the Word of God. You're acting on the Word. That's the blessing spot. Now, this says in John 14... Uh, let's see. Let me check it out and see if it's what I think. Hallelujah. I get turned on over these things, you know. He that keepeth my commandments. Well, that's all good. He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father... Now, we, you know, we hear verses become so familiar that we just kind of glaze over them, but, but that's a big deal there. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. I mean, there it is. It just doesn't give you maybe he might do it. It just says he will. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask, in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, Jesus said, keep my word. If you love me, do what I say. And I'm saying this based on these other scriptures. If you do what he says... That love of God will be manifest. Your needs will be met. Your situation will be fixed. You can live a life of blessing. Now, we can't be, really, you can't qualify for the blessing in the New Testament unless you walk in love. Why is that? Because that is our commandment. We don't have all those other things, m many of them we should do, but there, but. All those other things are all wrapped up in the love of God. You're not going to be committing adultery if you're walking in love. 
You won't be killing anybody if you're walking in love. So we're, we have a whole new set of rules. If you love me, keep my commandments. And he says, I'll send you another comfort. He says, I will come to you. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, in them, he it is that loves me. And he that loveth me, Jesus said, he that keeps my commandments loves me. So if we do the word, we're loving him. And he that loves him, it says, he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. Glory to God. Think about it. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. What, what does that mean? That means Jesus will love, if we, when we love the Father, Jesus loves us and he makes himself manifest in our lives. That means we see, if we don't see him, we see the results of him. I will manifest myself to him. How do we see those results? Well, what did we get when we made Jesus Lord of our lives? We received the blessing. Glory to God. We came out from under the curse, and if you've never been born again, you're still under the curse. You've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you're still under that curse, and you probably know it better than I do that you are. But when you make him the Lord of your life, you get born over again, you come out of the curse, which has like every bad thing you can think of in it, and you come into the blessing. God doing you good all the time. And the more we walk in obedience to him, the more blessing is manifest in our lives. And you know that's easy to see. Why? Because that obedience makes room for the blessing. God can't bless meanness and lying and cheating and killing and stealing. He can't bless that. You've cut him off. There's nothing there for him to bless. Hate, meanness, he can't bless that. But when you walk in the blessing and you do good and you say good and you obey the word of God and you obey the spirit and the prompting of the spirit on the inside of you, now you're giving him something to work with. Now he's got something he can bless. He can't bless the bad, but he can bless the good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isn't that awesome? So the more obedient we are to God, the more we honor his word and what he says to do in this word, the more blessing is manifest in our lives unless we cut it off with unbelief, you know. But if you know the word, you're not going to be in unbelief. You're going to get things straight. You're going to talk right. You're going to do right, leave right, live right, be blessed right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's, it's a done deal, and it's, it's all in our favor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we, we keep the love commandment. That's our, that's our job, is to keep the love commandment when then, if we want to know and have faith, we'll have to spend time in the Word, receive it, believe it, say that's me when you read it, something good, when the blessing says something good, he's blessed if, when he does this, he does that. Well, we do this and that. Whatever it is, he says, we endeavor to obey him. And the blessing is manifest in our lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you know what? There's no limit to the blessing. There's just a limit to how much we'll receive of it, a limit to how much we'll obey God and do what he says. But once you get the hang of living with God, you don't ever want to go back to the stinky old world. Amen. Once you get to walk in the blessing and you walk in love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and kindness and faithfulness, once you get the hang of it, you don't want to go back into strife and hate and unloveliness, lack, curse. Glory to God. Now how do you, how you come into it in the first place is to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life. Because he's the one that paid the price for all the sin 
that man brought upon him and upon his seed, which we were. Everybody in here is, came from the seed of Adam. If you didn't, we're going to check you out. <laughs> you might be a little green man from Mars, but we probably would have noticed. Isn't it simple? Isn't it simple? And, and so that curse, we were just born into the world. The curse came on us. And we were, God didn't say, I'm going to make everybody, I'm going to make everybody do this. I'm going to make everybody make Jesus the Lord of their lives. I'm going to make them. They're not going to have any choice. No, that's the way the devil does. He doesn't give you choice. He lies. He steals. He, he destroys. And he, he, he doesn't give you a choice. He wants control. That's the deal about the devil. He wants control. Because he ain't got nothing. I mean, he is broke. He is disgusted. He is in under the whole weight of the curse. All the bad is on him. And there's no redeemer for him because of what he's done. But we're not that way. But if we're going to serve the devil, we're going to get his reward. So we make Jesus the Lord of our lives. We get born over again. We get a new spirit a new birth, that really happens, a new birth. And we become what the Bible calls a new creation. Uh, somebody said a species of being that's never been before. I'm not the same girl I was. Well, I could say woman. I'm not the same woman I was some years ago. And I'm so glad because I had problems, we had no money, we were in debt, and we got born over again. And things began to change for the better as we got in the Word of God and found out the truth. from New York and uh, she had had pain in her chest from lifting her bags and it's all gone and then she had bad burns on her arm that were in pain and they're now all gone. Praise God! Thank you Lord! The burns just happened on Monday past. The enemy was stopping me from getting here but I said I already have the victory. And it's gone. It's gone. gone. The pain Hallelujah. is gone. And it's fading away. Fading away. Praise God. <laughs> marvelous. I don't remember anybody ever being healed of burns in the service. Do you? Wait, go away. Well, hey, thank you, Jesus. Glory to amen, God. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. I've been watching the Copelands maybe just about a year or so, and I became a partner around that time. But before then, I was in my own church and, you know, following the Word of God there. But I was having a lot of trouble, finances. I was finding myself attacked. The business I was in was failing. Finances became stressful. It was putting stress on my marriage. I saw them in the past on TV. I said, oh, cute couple with a funny accent. But I didn't sit down and listen to them. Now they had my attention. And the more they spoke, the more I read, the more I recorded, the more I re-listened and listened. And then I started following them. It made sense. And I started practicing what they were preaching. And I started praising God differently. And my relationship with Him deepened. Since I've been here, I've been carrying a bag that was kind of heavy. And when I swung it one time, I felt my chest muscle pull. And then on Monday, as I said earlier, I got this burn. And that was from boiling water going across my arm from the tea I was making. It was literally boiling. And the minute it hit my skin after I screamed, I put my hand over it and said, by his stripes, I am healed. And I spoke in tongues. And my husband took me to the hospital and we saw about some care. And while I was here, I felt the chest muscle pain dissolve and go away. And the pain I was feeling through the arm, it's, it not only went away, but it's fading. It was much darker when I first got here. So as I'm sitting here, I'm noticing it's getting lighter and lighter. So I'm so thankful. I had no doubt. I knew he would heal me. 
I'm his baby girl. I'm his daughter. He loves me. Now, you know what? Think about it. Every person that's healed today, they, they didn't get healed by laying on of hands. They got healed by faith. They believe God. This is what you do at home when you get a, have a pain or have a, a symptom or hear a bad report. You don't have to go somewhere to get prayed for. Just take it. Take, act on the Word of God and receive it. For more than 30 years, Gloria Copeland has taught God's Word on health and healing. And now she wants to help you learn how to receive your healing. God wants you well, and He wants you to experience life free from sickness, disease, and pain. Through the Receive Your Healing Package, you can renew your mind as you learn what God's health plan is for you. You can even discover how to override health issues that run in the family. This package by Gloria Copeland includes a book, God's Will for Your Healing, the six CD Healing School series, and Healing Confessions CD to activate the healing power of God through the spoken word. Also included is Brother Kenneth Copeland's prescription healing brochure to help keep God's prescription for health in front of your eyes. You don't have to wait any longer. Take part in God's health plan today. Side effects include a healthy body, freedom from pain, renewed outlook from God's Word. They may also include joy, peace, restful sleep, and boundless energy. Order the Receive Your Healing Package for $24.99 and enjoy a special savings of 45%. Simply log on to kcm.org slash TV special and request your package today. Transform your overall health and well-being through the Word of God. Live out the full numbers of your days in health and peace. For an additional 10% off, order your package online. For this and other products on healing by Kenneth Copeland Ministries, go to kcm.org. Order today. Victory starts when you're born again. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, do it right now. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Take me and do something with me. Glory to God. And we want to give you this gift if you, if you made Jesus the Lord of your life or if you just want to learn more about your salvation. This book, He Did It All For You, is free. We'll be glad to give it to you. It's got, it'll come with two brochures to help you learn how to start reading your Bible and take it and grow. Glory to God. So request your free salvation package on kcm.org. As a believer, healing belongs to you. Jesus himself took care of it for you and me. You are blessed and you are healed. This is Gloria Copeland reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, be sure to request your free salvation package from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland on kcm.org. When you live by faith, everything is going to be all right.